We're approaching the festival of Raksha Bandhan, a traditional Hindu rite that celebrates the bond between brothers and sisters. In recent times, it has become symbolic of ties of friendship and mutual care between men and women who may not be blood relatives. And this inspired Yudhika to create a menu that evokes the strong and the sweet. Raksha Bandhan celebrates the bond shared between a brother and a sister. It is observed on the last day of Shravan, which is why we're preparing a vegetarian meal. On the menu today, oven baked paneer, we've got a smoked vegetable biryani, and a sweet something for the Rakhi ceremony, white chocolate barfi. I'm starting out with the barfi, and for that you'll need 500 grams of milk powder. I've rubbed that in together with a bit of dessert cream, left that to stand overnight, and then put it through a food processor and blitz till smooth. This is what it should look like, crumbly bits. You want to remove the lumps in the milk powder mix. Turn on the heat and to the pan add evaporated milk. Next dessert cream. Mix that around a bit, heat it through. To the hot liquid add the butter. I love watching this melt in. You can add all the ingredients and combine them in the pan, bring them up to the boil, but I do find the sugar in the condensed milk tends to caramelize, giving you a darker barfi. To this, add the sugar. You don't have to sift the sugar for this, let the heat do the work. The icing sugar melts immediately, and your cream sauce turns into quite a runny one. Don't panic. To this, the condensed milk. Swirl the condensed milk in with the liquid. Simmer this over a low heat until the mixture reaches the consistency of thick custard. And this is the consistency you're looking for. Give it a few seconds to cool down and to test this. Use your finger and it should leave and it shouldn't come together. The milk powder mix going in next. Few scoops going in at a time. Work that in. This is now over a very low heat. I love the word smush. It best describes what I'm doing right now. A Little more going in. Work that in, it's not going to be a perfectly smooth mixture. I think I can add all this in now. The last of the milk powder's in, work that through. This sets quite easily, spicing the barfi up with a bit of cardamom. Work that in. The barfi mix is ready. I've got a greased dish here and I've lined it with plastic wrap. Scoop that into the dish. As it starts to cool down, it's easier to work with and doesn't drip as much. Leave this to cool at room temperature. And if you want to serve a block of barfi, you can always pat this down smooth using a little butter just to smooth over the surface. While this sets, I'm starting with the veg biryani. For the vegetable biryani, I've got a selection of vegetables here. I'm starting out by heating some oil in the pan. I've preheated the pot already. To this, a bay leaf and cinnamon stick cumin seeds, fry those until they're fragrant. Next, onion going in. To the onion, add salt and give that a stir. The onions form the base of this biryani. They need to be properly cooked. We normally spoil our guests with meaty dishes, with lamb, chicken and prawn. I think a veg biryani well made is such a treat and it's not something we often think of preparing for a special occasion. The onions look like golden nibs. To this, add ginger and garlic. Fry that off. To this, red chili powder. Mix that through and turn off the heat. Add the potatoes. You can just lay them in. You can cut them into wedges or chunks if you prefer. That's the first layer. To this, add the green beans. Just pour those in. Carrots. I've left these vegetables quite chunky. Peas. Gadra beans and the chickpeas. Pour the cream into a bowl. I'm going to add cumin, coriander and garam masala to this. A teaspoon of cumin, two teaspoons of coriander, a teaspoon of garam masala, generous pinch of turmeric. Mix that in lightly. You can use yogurt for this if you prefer. And Pour this over the vegetables. Now to smoke this mix, I've got a charcoal briquette here that I've heated up. Pop that in the center. Melted butter now going in. Cover with a tight fitting lid. 
I'm trying to recreate what we used to call the temple biryani. It had a smoky flavor, takes me all the way back to my childhood. As soon as the smoke settles down, it's time to layer the rest of the ingredients. The bowl should have cooled down by now. I have chef's hands. Next, brown lentils going on top. Spread that over to this uncooked rice. Once the rice is in, let's pour in some boiled water. I've got two cups of uncooked rice here. You're going to need about four and a half cups of water. Sprinkle the brown onion over. I'm using some egg yellow food coloring to tint the rice grains. Pour over the melted butter. We're now ready to steam the biryani, so turn on the heat again. A low heat, cover the pan with a tight-fitting lid and simmer that until all the moisture is absorbed by the rice grains and they puff up beautifully. For the oven-baked almond-crusted paneer, I've got a slab of paneer here that I've made with four liters of full cream milk. We're going to combine the ingredients in the mixing bowl. The first Greek yogurt goes in. To this, the fresh cream. I like using a combination of yogurt and fresh cream. To this, some carom seeds, fresh garlic, the spices for this are red chili powder. You can make it spicier by adding a little more. Two level teaspoons of garam masala, golden turmeric, I'd say about a quarter teaspoon. Some spice, you can use a rub for this. I've made my own at home. This uses cumin seeds, coriander seeds, cloves and cardamom pods. To the spice paste, add some chickpea flour. Work these ingredients until they make up a paste. I've lined a baking tray with paper, a smear of this paste going on top, roughly the size of that slab of paneer, a little more going on top. The paneer with this lovely marinade on top and those crunchy almonds, you don't need a thick layer at the bottom. Sunflower oil, a drizzle going on top. This is going to roast that paste at the bottom. The slab of paneer goes on top. The rest of the paste going on top. Smooth that over. A touch of oil. Seasoned with a generous sprinkling of salt and black pepper. To this, the flaked almonds going on top. You could also use whole almonds. We want to coat this paneer in the almonds, so a generous sprinkling will do nicely. The paneer is ready for the oven. Bake it off at 180 degrees Celsius until the almonds are golden. I'm going to serve this barfi as a truffle, and for that I've got some melted butter here. A few drops of butter going onto my palm, just like that. Use a tablespoon, scoop a bit of that barfi up, See it set beautifully and roll it into a ball. The butter prevents the mixture from sticking to your palms. There it is, perfectly smooth. This barfi keeps really well in the refrigerator so you can always save some for another occasion. I've got some melted chocolate here in a bowl of hot water. That's to ensure it stays quite runny. These decorations make this barfi come alive. White chocolate works really well with the creamy texture of the barfi and cardamom. We've got some colored almonds here. Grab a few and strategically place them on top. My daughter Tanvi is going to tie a raki for her brother Rashil later, and these are his favorite treats. I'm sure he can indulge in almost an entire plate on his own. He's going to be very happy. I can get the aroma coming off that smoky biryani. It smells absolutely delicious. To finish up, some coriander going on top. The potatoes have soaked up the spices and I've used floury potatoes for this recipe. We've got the almond crusted paneer baked to perfection in the oven. The almonds have turned beautiful and golden in color. We've got the smoked vegetable biryani. And to finish up our Raksha Bandhan treats, we've got this beautiful creamy barfi truffle. This might look like an ornate decoration, but it signifies the precious bond shared between a brother and a sister. I'd like to wish all the brothers out there a happy Raksha Bandhan.